All right, we are live. Hello, good Saturday to everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day. I uh, think everybody's watching the Olympics today. At least everybody on my Twitter feed is. Um, this morning we are going to be talking about roast, um, chuck roast, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, it's good to be back. I was on a two-week hiatus from here. Um, I was hoping to do a show when I was in California, but it just didn't pan out. Uh, we were in Hawaii for a week. It was absolutely wonderful to get away from the sub-zero temperatures here. Um, and then we stopped um, after Hawaii in California to visit my family and had a wedding reception there, so that was really, really nice. We had a really good time. And now we're back for a little bit. And, oh, okay. So um, I will go ahead and get into our uh, chuck roast here. Let me open up my document. Um, first of all, um, I'll be talking the difference between chuck roast and arm roast, or some people call it a crossword roast. Um, I actually picked up an arm roast from our grocery store. Um, because it was cheaper than chuck roast and pretty much when you're going to be cooking it the way um, that you would cook a chuck roast you really can't tell the difference. Um, this one was $4.59 a pound. Um, chuck roasts are expensive right now so anyways we'll talk about the difference between the two of them. Um, there's lots of different cuts there is um, lots of ways that people have tried to rejuvenate the chuck roast. So you'll find when you go shopping, sometimes some grocery stores will have lots of different cuts, different names, but essentially it's all the same thing, just cut a different way. And we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, let me find my... PDF that I have here. There it is. Okay, let me screen share it here. Oops. Okay. Okay, so on the left hand side here, we've got our arm roasts, cross rib roasts, whatever you want to call them, um, right here. And on the right hand side, we have actually a boneless chuck roast. Um, and I will show you where these both come from. Um, these two are my favorite picks for a pot roast. Um, the reasoning is behind that. Um, you can also use a rump roast, but usually a rump roast tends to be a little lean, more lean. It's not going to have as much intermuscular fat, and it's not going to have that um, connective tissue that a chuck roast or an arm roast will have. And all that is going to break down and help... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Make a tender roast. Uh, so... There's primarily three different roasts that you will see. Um, I don't think in the grocery store they necessarily label um, sell bone-in roasts anymore. I think everything is pretty much boneless. But if you are having a custom beef cut uh, and you get your chuck roast, you will be able to tell the difference between the two of these unless you go boneless with them. Uh, so first, of, first roast is the seven-bone chuck roast, and this is on the right, top right. The reason why it's called a seven bone is basically because this bone right here looks like a seven. And this one is actually getting in towards the blade uh, roast because this bone is extending up. Um, the blade chuck roast is down here. This is the blade bone, runs right through here. And also it's going to have a section of the rib right here. So as you go further down this piece, 
this bone is actually going to extend up and get larger. And then we have our cross rib, which is a different cut of meat, but it comes off the same area. This is a cross rib. Usually it's marked, and you can tell the difference between it because it'll have this seam of gristle coming right through the center of it, right here. Um, and it is called, some, oftentimes called shoulder roast, an arm roast, a cross rib roast, um, basically all the same thing, and you'll see that in just a minute. So here's our beef skeletal chart again from if you remember when we did the short ribs. Um, you're, it's a whole half of beef, and what's going to happen is when they are ready to cut it, if they hang it as a whole half, they will cut it in between the th 12th and 13th rib and you'll have your hind quarter and your front quarter. I think I said last time that um, in our shop we hang them by the quarter, so the, t the cut between the 12th and the 13th rib is actually done um, when the animal's slaughtered. So when it comes out, we're just going to pull a front quarter out, and then you'll have your hind quarter as well. So, disregard our hind quarter, but here we have our front quarter. And the same thing like when we showed the short ribs, so our short ribs were right in here. If you remember from the last time, it was actually going to be making a cut right here. And this is what's called the plate. And then up here you're going to have your rib, rib steaks, rib eyes, things like that. So actually what's going to really happen is they aren't going to make a full break right here when this uh, front quarters hanging on the hook. They're actually going to cut in between the fifth and sixth rib right here um, and leave it so it's not through the bone here and it's not going to go through the bone here yet but it's just going to be cut right here as kind of a reference point. Then what they're going to do is this is kind of a wiggly line but they are going to take and they are going to peel this whole piece of meat off of the front here and including the leg. Underneath here you're going to have brisket and it's going to extend underneath this leg up through the chest and up here is going to be your chucks. So they're going to take this shoulder bone and this shank bone right here and this whole piece is going to be what's called your cross rib, your arm or your shoulder roast um, and they're going to leave the shank on there as well. Some butchers don't cut it like this. Some butchers will make a straight cut through here and separate the chuck and the cross rib. Um, depends on where you're having it done. So here's a rough picture of kind of what he's doing here. So here is the cut in between the fifth and the sixth rib right here. And then he's taking this hook and he has the knife right here in this hand, and he's actually going to peel this whole piece off right here. And once you peel it off, it's going to look like this right here. So here's our shank, and here is our kind of shoulder cross rib piece. What they're going to end up doing with this is they're going to bone out this whole bone. So you have this whole roast. They're going to roll it, and then they're going to cut it into whatever size roast you want. So say if you want a two to three pound roast, then you're going to have more that come off of this cross rib area. If you wanted three to four pounds or even four to five pounds, you're going to get less. So here he's boned out in the top left. He's boned out that cross rib section and that shank section, and he's rolling it, and see he's tying it. Um, you don't have to have it rolled and tied. It makes a little nicer of a roast if you roll it and tie it. The way it stays, stays together really nice. Um, and then here down on the bottom, he's cutting whatever size roast that this customer has, has wanted. And then here's all the finished roast. So you can see you get a really nice put together rolled, bone rolled and tied roast out of that cross rib area. Um, these can also be done bone in. You can just cut them. Um, I'm sure that there are some places that do them bone in. Um, and they also have taken, like I said before, can take that shank part off and let me go back. They will actually make the cut right about here, and so they have this whole piece, but we like to keep it all one piece, and we pull it off very similar to this. So now our chuck. So our chuck is going to be, let me go back again, our chuck is going to be this top portion right up here. Chuck roast, that's where it comes from. Um, as we 
get closer to the the rib steaks or the rib eyes. Um, we're going to have what's called a chuck eye, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. And then as you come down this way, you're going to get closer to the neck. The chuck is actually going to change. The muscle and the bone structure is going to change. So here's a really good example of these are our blade, blade chuck rows. And actually right here, this looks a lot like a ribeye, and that's because this is the cut that sits right next to the ribeye. It's called a chuck steak. Um, a lot of people call it a poor man's steak. Um, because it really, there's really no difference between this little eye right here and a ribeye. It's essentially the same thing. So a lot of people pick up chuck eye steaks and can get them for a better value than a ribeye steak, and they pretty much taste the same. So as you come down on this far end, you can actually see kind of in this picture, this is actually the neck. Um, and these bones change. So you go from this blade bone and having this rib bone that, that comes through right here. And this is in the middle here, you're going to get your seven bone. So this is not necessarily a seven bone down here. This is actually towards the very end of the neck portion. Um, this bone's going to change here, and it's also going to change right here. So your center cuts are going to be your seven bone chuck roast. Um, if we were to take and dissect this, uh, this is going to be this roast right here. You'd actually have, these people are calling it a bone-in rib steak. It's not necessarily a bone-in rib steak. This is actually a chuck, chuck steak, and it has the bones still on it. This is actually going to be your chuck roast portion. And if any of you know what a flat iron steak is or have heard of a flat iron, this is where a flat iron steak comes from. So it comes from this little blade steak that's going to be right here under this blade bone. So these are what flat iron steaks, this is a little bonus. These are what flat iron steaks look like. Um, if you don't cut the chuck roast up and you peel this, if you peel this whole muscle off as a whole piece, before you cut the chuck roast, these are what your your flanks or your flat iron steaks are going to look like. Um, basically, flat iron steaks came about because uh, people were trying to meet checkoffs and assurance boards were trying to add value to a chuck. So there are many, many, many different ways that you can dissect all the muscles in a chuck. And you'll get lots of things like top blade steaks or bottom blade, under blade steaks, or you'll get flat irons, um, things, chuck eyes, things of that nature. So when you see those things in the grocery store, know that most of the time it comes off of any sort of blade steak, usually comes off of the chuck, and it's just a different way to cut it. So you're going to have your top, top, like a top blade steak and an under blade steak. So... That is where your, your chuck rows come from. So as you can see, there's really not much difference between an arm and a chuck. Um, you are just because of the nature of the muscle up here. You may get a little more intermuscular fat on a chuck roast um, versus an arm roast, but they both come off of the same type area. They both are an area where the muscle was moving and working quite a bit because you're getting into an arm and a shoulder shoulder area so that is the reason why you can't do much with an arm roast or a chuck roast besides braise it because um, otherwise if you just try and cook it it's going to be tough. Um, there are if some of you live in an area where there are lots of Hispanic populations or um, maybe even Asian inspired they do slice this arm roast let me go back they do slice this arm roast, uh, if you leave it as a whole muscle piece, uh, really, really thin on a slicer, and you can make like carne asada out of it or um, stir fry or something of that nature. So a lot of times um, that might be what's being used for some of those things you buy in the grocery store or even stew meat. I know it makes chuck and arm make really good stew meat. Probably not chuck, but maybe arm cross rib would make good stew meat. So, okay, now we're back. Um, all right, so I will go ahead again and show you 
this is our arm roast, and this is what I was talking about when they leave it like a whole muscle piece. So there's no strings on this. Um, you can actually buy it's called the heart muscle, um, and when you buy it in a box. So if you're going to be getting it like wholesale as a whole piece, um, you look for the heart muscle um, cross rib something of that nature. Um, you can actually put this on a slicer just like this um, and slice it really, 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 really uh, thin and then uh, use it for carne asada or something similar to that. So for our chuck roast, our pot roast is super, super, super easy. It's one of my favorite things to make just because it's simple and easy. It's a one pot dish, so that makes it super easy as well, very little cleanup. Um, I'm going to take and heat this pot up. I use Dutch oven <laughs> and uh, I, it's my favorite thing. These are actually, um, I have a Food Network one, it's cast enamel. So you could use cast iron too if you wanted to. Um, this cast enamel pot is very easy to clean. Um, you usually, if you are going to be braising in it or doing something that takes long, slow cooking and it gets all those bits crusted up on it, um, I just basically let it soak in the dishwasher overnight and, uh, or not in the dishwasher, in the sink. I don't put it in the dishwasher. Um, and it lifts it and you can just scrub it with a regular brush. Whereas I found sometimes cast iron, things will stick to it if you don't keep it really well oiled, well seasoned, um, things will stick to it and it's really, really hard to get that off. So cast enamel, um, like I said, I have a Food Network one. We got this for our wedding. This is a, the Crusade, Crusade, I don't know how you say it, um, French made pot and these are expensive but they're absolutely worth it and I love 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 them I have two of them that I use quite a bit for soups for roasts for anything pork loins whatever um, it can go in the oven and it can go straight from the stove to the oven so this would actually work good if I had one that wasn't quite so big and was short when we did those pork chips um, to put them in the oven so we're going to let this thing heat up. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to it. And if you remember when I made short ribs and when I made pork chops and everything else, I always love to brown everything. So um, adds more flavor to it. So that's what we're going to do with this. We're going to brown it both sides and on the ends. Then we're going to take it out. Then we're going to add vegetables into this and kind of let our vegetables sit. We're going to add some wine into this so that it gets those good stuck bits that are left over from our browning, brings them up, and then pour broth and spices, and it's going to go in the oven. So very, very, very simple. I'm going to just salt and pepper our roast here. I'm going to make sure you get lots of salt, lots of pepper on there, adds flavor. And then as soon as this is hot, I'll drop this chuck roast in there. You want to make sure it gets nice and warm so that you're going to get a good brown on it. A few minutes each side is really all it needs, just until it's nice, golden brown across, and flip it. All right, and actually I'm going to turn on our vent as well. Might get loud for a minute. All right, I'm going to salt and pepper the other side of this while it's in the pan. Kind of a little trick so you don't flip it over. Here, I'll pick this up and I'll show you guys. You 
really don't need much more than just a nice brown on it. There are some little scare marks. Doesn't have to be anything too intense. Flip it over, let it brown on the other side. If your pan is nice and hot and these pans heat really nicely, they heat really even heat, um, and they get really hot if you have, have it on high. So you really just throw it in, let it brown, sear, sear, and then take it out. Let's flip it up so we get that fat layer that's on the end here, nice and brown. And then the other end. Basically, if I'm going to be starting any sort of roast, whether it be a pork roast, um, like a pork shoulder roast, or a beef roast like this, I always brown it like this. Always, always. Even when I'm going to put it in the crock pot, I do brown things as well. All right. Now I'm just going to set it on a plate over here. Um, let's see if this isn't too hot. I can look this up. So see, there's nice brown spots in the bottom there. I'm going to put our vegetables in. Basically what I've done here, so my roast is about two to three pound roast. I've very coarsely chopped up some onions. Um, I've chopped some coarse celery here. Very coarse chop on some carrots. Um, you can add parsnips into this if you want. If you want potatoes, you don't want to serve it with mashed potatoes, you can add potatoes in here too. Um, a few cloves of garlic. And I'm going to let this kind of start to saute in here. Um, and there's really, you can add whatever you want. If you don't like celery, I think the celery adds a nice flavor to the broth that I'm going to put in. You don't have to. Um, you can, like I said, you can add parsnips are a really good one to add to this. Um, I just recently discovered parsnips, and they are delicious. They're kind of like potato, um, or even potatoes. But I plan on serving this with uh, potato, mashed potatoes, so I won't be adding potatoes to this. All right. And the key here is making sure that you're going to chop things large enough so that they don't, they're still don't break down a lot in the cooking process. So this is going to go into the oven for two and a half to three hours usually, depending on how big your roast is. If your roast is bigger, you're going to be putting it in for a longer period of time. Um, the celery is going to break down into basically nothing when it cooks for a long time. Same with the onions. That's why I coarse chop them. You don't have to dice them up really fine. The carrots will maintain fairly well. So. All right, now in order to get those uh, nice beef pieces and flavor off the bottom, I always add some sort of alcohol. Um, we did this with the short ribs. Um, wine, I usually use this red wine. You can use beer too, like a, a really good stout or a porter. Um, it's really nice in this as well. Um, just dump it in. About three quarters of a cup. And you're just going to want to let it cook, cook off for a little bit, cook the alcohol out of it, and also scrape the bottom of that pan to get all that flavorful bits to lift up. I'm also going to salt and pepper these. Add a little bit of flavor. Um, for herbs, I usually always add herbs to this. I am going to be adding thyme. I don't have any fresh herbs, so uh, dried herbs are going to have to work. Um, you can use parsley. You can use thyme. You can use rosemary. Um, you can use sage even if you want. Anything that's going to give a little extra flavor to it. I am going to add about a teaspoon of each of these. 
I've got my thyme, and I've got my rosemary. When I post this recipe, I'm going to have to remember what I did, because usually this is a kind of add-it-to-the-pot-don't-measure type of recipe. All right, Let's give this a good stir. And then I'm going to add beef consomme. I like to use beef consomme. You can use beef broth. I'm also going to add beef broth to it. I think the beef consomme has a little better flavoring to it, a um, little more depth of flavor. Um, we'll add the whole can. Um, of the concentrate, and then I'm going to add a can of water. Just straight out of this can. Works. All right. Now then I'm going to push some of the vegetables aside, and I'm going to add the beef roast back to this. Just let it sit really nicely on top of those vegetables. I'll lift this up so you guys can see. So it's just going to sit on the bed of vegetables. And then since the roast isn't necessarily covered um, halfway, I'm going to add just a little beef broth to uh, add a little bit of extra moisture into there. Um, the important part is when, especially if this was a rump roast, you are going to want to make sure there is enough moisture in here. Make sure that you braise it really well. Um, rump roast very lean. Anything else that's really lean, this cut is a little bit leaner than a chuck roast. So you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of juice in there. Make sure that it's not going to cook away as it cooks in the oven. I have my oven set on 325. You can set it anywhere between 275 and 300. If you set it lower, you just got to make sure that you give it enough time to cook. Um, and basically, you're going to want to cook this roast until it is fork tender. So till it's starting to fall apart, it's really not necessarily done. Um, you're going to want to give yourself plenty of time to cook it. You can do this in a crock pot. So basically, you just do the same thing that we did, except for you add all the broth and everything into the crock pot, and then let it cook the whole day, and by the time you get home, it'll be extremely fork tender. Um, I have put mine in the oven usually at 325 um, if I'm going to be eating it, kind of slicing it up. If you want shredded, shredded beef um, in the crock pot, it's even better, because then it shreds up, and you can use it for sandwiches or whatever else you want with it. Um, I know some people add like pepperoncinis to this would be awesome with it. Add some heat to it. Um, there's really all kinds of ways you can dress it up, but this is just a very simple, bare bones, basic. Um, and I, we will put this in the oven. I will show you guys what it looks like when it comes out. I'm going to move this. I'll actually move this over for right now. So this one, I started about 8, 8 or 8.30 this morning, so it's been cooking for several hours, and it's looking really nice. Let me grab a plate, and I'll go ahead and pull this out. Oh yeah, so it's wanting to fall right apart. So as you can see, it's extremely fork tender. I can take this and just rip it, rip it apart. The good thing about using these vegetables is you can just serve it with the vegetables on the side. The onions have basically cooked down into not, not much. The carrots have maintained their uh, integrity very well. And then, there it goes. Basically, just extremely fork tender. You could just rip it apart with your hands. There you go. 
the perfect pot roast, arm roast or chuck roast. Very easy. Um, as usual, I will have this posted on Tuesday. Um, that's going to be the usual format is Tuesday I will post the recipe and I will also post um, the video again so for those of you who missed it um, and are watching later uh, via the blog so that's about it for today I hope everybody has a fantastic day um, if you are interested in the recipe on Tuesday um, you can check out prairiecalifornian.com or you can find me on Twitter at prairieca.com. Um, I hope everybody has a good day watching the Olympics or whatever else you are doing today. Uh, we will see you again next week. If you have any suggestions, what you want me to cook, um, tweet me or uh, hit me up on the blog. I would love to hear what you guys are interested in having me cook. Um, have a great Saturday. Bye.